Hi everyone and welcome to this video on trigonometry. Today in this video we're going to use trigonometry to find the missing side of a right angled triangle. If you've watched the introduction to trigonometry video, this image here should be familiar to you. We have our right angled triangle on the left of the image that is labelled with the correct sides for the angle theta. On the right hand side we have our equations of sine, cos and tan and how they would be represented as ratios between those sides. I've got the shortened version of those equations with just the capital letter representing the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse, and if I use those equations again in this video, I'll be shortening those equations as such. Let's take a look at this example together to begin with. We are given this right angle triangle and the information labeled include one of the angles that is not 90 degrees, and in this case, the hypotenuse. So when we get these questions, there will always be an angle labeled, and we'll always have two sides that are being discussed. Our job then is to first label this right angle triangle with respect to the angle that is labeled. Remembering that the opposite side is opposite the angle that we're discussing, so the angle 61 opposite that is x, so this is going to be labeled O. The side that is opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse, the longest side of the right angle triangle, so we can label that H. And at this stage it's our job to go back to those three trigonometric ratios, the equations of sine, cos, and tan, and pluck out the correct equation that relates together the two sides in question. Here we have the opposite side and the hypotenuse, therefore we know that sine, so SOH is the equation that's going to link together those values. Let's first write down that equation. So sine of theta is going to be equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. At this stage, we can start to fill in some of these unknown variables. We know that the angle is what always goes into sine. So I write sine down with open brackets, input the angle 61, and remember to always close your brackets of your sine function. In your calculator, when you type the sine button, it should come up with that open bracket already. On the other side of the equation, I don't know what the opposite side is in length, so we can keep that as x for now. And on the bottom of that fraction, we can replace h with 9.6. So let's solve this equation by multiplying both sides by 9.6. We're going to treat sine plus the bracket that comes after it as an entity in our equation. So if we times, we times sine of 61 by something. If we divide, we divide sine of 61 by something. So here I'm going to multiply both sides by 9.6. The next line will look like 9.6 times by sine of 61. And of course this is equal to x. The left hand side is something we can simply input into our calculator. And if we place that into our calculator, we find that x is 8.40. There's a couple things that we can do once we get the answer. The first is to check that we've rounded it correctly, depending on what the question is asking for. The next thing to do is to check if we have got the answer semi-correct. By that I mean we can compare it to the other sides of our right angle triangle and see if our answer makes sense. This side being 8.4 makes sense in this case because it's shorter than the longest side, which is 9.6. If you ever find that you have a side of the triangle that is not the hypotenuse as the longest, then something must have gone wrong with the question. So that's just an extra step you can take to check your answer. Of course, the final thing is to check units. However, in this case, the question had no units to begin with, so we can leave it at that. Let's do another simple example together, and this time I'll write down the steps that I'm taking as I go along. The first step is to mark on the hypotenuse, the adjacent, and then the opposite side. I've placed hypotenuse first because that is the easiest side of our right angle triangle to label. It's always opposite 90 degrees. In this case, it'll be this bottom side here. The adjacent and opposite, well, you can work those out in any order. The adjacent side is the one that is adjacent to our important angle, so this side here. And the opposite is opposite the important angle of 41. So this side here. The next step is to choose the correct equation for this particular question. In this case, the two sides that are labeled are the opposite side and the adjacent side. Thinking back to our three equations, so, ka, toa, toa, tan equals the opposite over the adjacent, 
is the equation that links together those two sides. The final step is to take the values that we know, plug them into the equation, and solve for our unknown. In this case, we know the angle, so we would get tan of 41 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is 7.8, divided by our adjacent, which in this case is x. To solve this, we would first need to times both sides of the equation by x, and finally, we would have to divide both sides by tan of 41. Finally, we can solve the right-hand side of this equation by placing it into the calculator, in which we find that x is equal to 8.97. So once again, the three steps to take when you're solving to find a missing side of your right-angle triangle using trigonometry, we are first going to mark on the hypotenuse adjacent and opposite, then we're going to pick out the correct equation that links together the two sides that are labelled. These could be labelled with an unknown variable or with a numerical value. The final step is to take everything that you know from the triangle, place it into the equation that you've chosen, rearrange and solve for the missing variable. Let's take a look at this question here. In this case, we have all three of the sides labelled. In a case like this, we can only work out one of these unknown variables at a time. Let's focus on A to begin with. We're going to need to label our right angle triangle. We're going to start by labeling the hypotenuse, so let's look for the right angle, and the side opposite that is going to be A. Then we're going to find the adjacent, in this case is 45, that's next to the 25 degrees, so let's label that capital A. The formula that links together those two equations is cosine, so cos of theta is going to be my adjacent over my hypotenuse. Let's replace those unknown variables. We're going to have cosine of 25 degrees is equal to 45 divided by a, little a in this case. Now we're going to rearrange times both sides by a, and the next step is to divide both sides by cos 25. We can place this into our calculator now, and we find our answer is 49.65 meters. Just double checking if that makes sense. The hypotenuse is of course the longest side, so we would expect our answer to be greater than 45, and indeed it is. For part B, we're not going to need to relabel the triangle in any sort of way, because we're still dealing with the angle of 25 degrees. However, in this case, we need to label the side with lowercase b, capital O, because it is the opposite side to our angle 25. The equation that links together the opposite side well, and in this case, we can choose between the hypotenuse and the adjacent. Let's choose the adjacent. The equation that we need is going to be tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Let's substitute in the variables that we know. We can see that we need to times both sides by 45. And now placing this into the calculator, we find that side length b is 20.98. Finally, we can work out theta that is remaining in this triangle. To do this, we need to remember that the sum of the angles inside of a triangle is 180 degrees. So the next step we can take is to set up a little equation where we add together all of the angles, the two that we already know, and 25 and 90, and the unknown one, theta, are going to sum together to be 180 degrees, subtracting 25 from both sides, and then subtracting 90 from both sides, we find that our answer theta is 65 degrees. Let's take a look at one last example together. Here we're asked to calculate the distance between the top of the head of this builder stood on top of the ladder to the ground below. He seems to be leaning up against a wall. The builder is labeled two meters tall, and he's standing at the very top of our ladder. The angle between a wall and a ground should hopefully be 90 degrees. So what we're asked to work out then is the total height. In order to do this, we first need to work out the length of this side of our right angle triangle. Let's label our triangle based off the important angle 50 degrees. First, we find 90. The side opposite is going to be labeled the hypotenuse. The side opposite 50 degrees is going to be the opposite and the remaining side is the adjacent. The two sides that we require are the opposite side and the hypotenuse. The equation that we must use then is sine 
equals opposite over hypotenuse. Let's substitute what we know into this equation. We know that the angle is 50 degrees and that the hypotenuse is 8. O is an unknown length, so now let's just label it x and take h to be 8. Rearrange this equation by timesing both sides of the equation by 8. We can place this into our calculator now. We find that this is our solution on the calculator screen, and let's round this to three significant figures. So that is approximately 6.13 meters. That is not the end of the question. The question is asking us how far from the top of the head of the builder. So we need to add his height onto this value here. It's going to be two plus 6.13, which is 8.13 meters off the ground. Although the ladder is eight meters long, the builder's head is just above eight meters above the ground. Thank you for watching this video. I'm glad you've made it all the way to the end. If you have any questions about the video, remember you can leave them down in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.